Eh, buon pomeriggio a tutti, eh, vorrei ringraziare l'autorità portuale di Livorno, il Presidente Gallanti, il Dottor De Bari, il Dottor Pagano per aver pensato ad Expo per questa occasione. Eh, come Expo ci stiamo interessando sempre più alle tematiche dell'innovazione, eh, perché ci sono stati dei cambiamenti nella politica europea eh, a proposito dell'innovazione. Eh, preferisco continuare in inglese perché l'audience è internazionale, io lavoro solo in inglese, quindi per evitare inglesismi ogni, eh, in, ogni, in ogni frase preferisco continuare in inglese. Um, we are, ESPO is the European Sea Ports Organization. We represent port authorities all over Europe and also from uh, uh, third countries. We represent the port authorities, but at the same time we represent the port associations. It depends on how the system is developed at the national level. For example, in Italy, our main member is the Assoporti, the Italian Association of Ports, and then of course the, the port authorities themselves participate into ESPO. What we do, we represent the interests of the ports towards the European institutions. It's what the Dr. De Bari was saying before, it's the, this, um, let's say, bottom-up approach. We try to influence the European uh, politics and legislation by saying what the ports need and what the, uh, the, the ports need from the European e institutions in, uh, in general. At the same time, um, ESPO is also a platform for uh, all European port authorities to sit at the same table, take common decisions and have some cooperation and try to find common solutions to common problems. Um, we have uh, this structure, we have a general assembly that meets twice per year and uh, takes the, let's say, the big decisions, the big strategies, then the executive committee meeting five times per year where you have, uh, let's say, CEOs from the different port authorities trying to take a decision that involve the, the daily life of ESPO and the technical committees. Uh, we have uh, in ESPO, we have different technical committees that are composed of technical experts from the ports. The, for example, we have uh, the trade facilitation committee, we have the intermodal logistic and industry where technical experts from different ports come together take common decisions, decide to share best practices, and from their point of view, that then they have to be, these point of views have to be, a, to be approved by the executive committee, we, we are able to have a, a common position as ESPO, to represent the whole, let's say, port world in front of the European institutions. As, as you can understand, I think it's the, it's quite, difficult sometimes to, to have common positions among ports that come from total different realities, from the, from the north, from the south, and so on. You can imagine that, but that, that at the same time it's a good opportunity also to build some trust and cooperation among ports. This is more or less about ESPO, and then we have the Secretariat, where I am a policy advisor there, and we have a structure of eight people, We work together and we help our members to, to cooperate and develop positions in front of the institutions. What we have been doing on uh, the, the innovation, as it was said before by um, Dr. De Bari, um, we had um, an ad hoc expert group on research and development the Port Authority of Livorno, but also the Port Authority of Valencia with other Port Authorities came and sit together at the same table. Why? Because, as it was said before, uh, the Commission sometimes comes and complains that the, uh, the ports do not participate enough to the calls of Horizon 2020. And uh, we try to, uh, to understand why it was like this, and one I think it cannot be synthesized by only this thing, but one of the reasons we believed it was that it was quite difficult in the calls and also in the work program of Horizon 2020 to find um, 
something really dedicated to ports. If you look, for example, at the waterborne section, it's mainly about vessels. I mean, you have more, there is more focus on the vessels, on the, let's say, the ship owner's world, but less on the infrastructure, less on the ports. Then what we try to do, it, it was to make our contribution to the work program 2016-17, that it will be the basis of the next calls for Horizon 2020. And uh, we sent this long paper to the Commission that it contained all these, uh, these issues like ad adaptive port planning, port cities, infrastructure, and so on. Then we had some meetings as well. What was the result? The result is that apparently we managed to have a section in the work program 2016-2017 on the ports that is called Ports of the Future, that it was the title of our contribution where Paolo was participating uh, as well. And uh, it will be uh, focused on the ports. It's uh, under the heading of the infrastructure. And uh, um, it, the, it says that the project can be from one, it will be co-financing of one, from one to five million euros. Uh, still, we don't know what will be the total uh, budget for that. Uh, but it's a good news for the ports. I mean, now it's up to the ports to sit together and we will also try to, to put them together in order to cooperate and have common projects on innovation. But it's a good opportunity. Now the ports have a possibility to apply and to participate to the calls. I think this is very important for the ports in general. Um, this was the, um, the work program for Horizon 2020. Um, in ESPO, we have a, a, new, a new committee, that is the Trade Facilitation Committee. And uh, these are the main uh, topics. And among the, the different topics that we have, there is also the European Digital Agenda. Um, why we are talking now about a European Digital Agenda? In fact, this, we can say it's one of the main focus of the Commission at the moment, at the European Commission. As you know, we have a new uh, European Commission, we have a new uh, President of the Com Commission, uh, Mr. Juncker. We have a new Transport Commissioner, that is um, Mrs. Violetta Bultz. And the big focus now is to develop digital agenda for transports. Uh, there was a communication in, uh, that it was published in May on uh, a new digital agenda for transport. Uh, and at the same time, the Commission launched uh, a forum at the, the so-called Digital Transport and Logistics Forum uh, that will cover some issues as the maritime and the, and the freight. In this forum, the, as ESPO we applied, it will be um, composed, let's say, of two different structures. You will have a plenary and some technical subgroups. And some of these subgroups are about ports, you see as the port service of optimization, the harmonization simplification, and so on. There are some issues that are of some relevance for the ports. Uh, as ESPO we applied, uh, we will be representing the ports, uh, the port authorities in mainly, let's say, in the plenary. But this is the request that I do to you, especially from, to people that are here that come from port authorities, from ports, we will need some technical experts on innovation, uh, on digital issues in the subgroups because we don't have the technical expertise to, uh, to do that. Then we will ask our person, please, if you, if you have an interest there, please contact us and we will try to put you in the subgroups that will meet, I don't know, like two, three times per year. But it will be important because this will determine the digital agenda of the ports in the next future. If you are willing to participate, please contact us, and this is very important. Um, what else? Um, it, let's say, about the topics of the, the next digital agenda, I would say that it's quite uh, difficult to define um, what will be there, because uh, um, still the concept have to be uh, developed in the forum. But what we can say is that uh, it, it is also what uh, this DS proposition and what the Trade Facilitation Committee says. These are more or less the main characteristics and the main, uh, let's say, not only preconditions, but also potential challenges of the um, of a transport digital agenda. The semantics. 
can we agree as different ports to have some common definitions by respecting anyway the diversity of the ports? You know, in many ports, sometimes it's difficult not only to, I, I'm not talking about benchmarking, but I'm talking about comparing. Sometimes it's very difficult to compare apparently same data because we don't have the same definitions. If you take, I don't know, uh, uh, modern split or when, when you talk about the port community, uh, what are, are we talking about if everyone is using a different thing? I think one of the big challenges there is to have common, defini common definitions but preserving also the diversity of the ports. There, it's one of the questions that I think ports have to ask themselves, what can be in a way harmonized and what cannot be harmonized? Um, another question is the ownership of the data. Uh, which, that, which data can be considered as public and which data can have to be considered as commercial? What ports can share, what they cannot share? Uh, there is a business case to, to share the data or not. Uh, again, need for standards. Um, which is the best approach? Are we going to, uh, to define a field of competence for the commissions, for the institutions, for the, for the national governments uh, to, to say what are the standards and, uh, what, and what are the competence? Where the, the commission should and the national bodies should stop in defining standards, digital standards for the ports, uh, the processes, how we can improve uh, our process through ICT, uh, our approach that is the business that has to drive process and not the contrary. We cannot have IT solutions that come from uh, the top and that we apply like this, but there, you need a business case and you need to start from the process to approach to have some I, IT solutions. The, um, this is more or less what will be, uh, I would say, the, um, the effect of a digital agenda for the transport in general. Uh, we will have and we will need in, intelligent pro port infrastructure at the same time, this will allow to have a, a real, real multimodal links where the customers can choose which mode of transport uh, is the best according to transparent data, according to up-to-date uh, data that is fully available online, digitalized. Um, for the ports, this means a different positive effects, I would say. Um, a better utilization of the existing capacity because it's just not about uh, developing new infrastructure, but we, we need also to, to, let's say, to retrofit and to update our infrastructure through more dig digitalization. Um, a concrete step towards the internal market for my time transport. If you think about the reporting formalities directive, how we can do better to have digita digitalized reporting formalities, um, efficient, in, efficient adaptive port planning, a better coordination of the port services, better administrative procedures, uh, a reliable collection and exchange of data, and uh, a real integration of the ports as multimodal apps in the new TNT network that it will be developed in the future as really multimodal points of the new uh, corridor approach. Uh, these are some examples of uh, uh, what uh, is already, uh, what ports are already doing at the moment. This is the example of the logistics. I mean, I don't, I don't need to repeat this. We have seen by the Port of Valencia Foundation, uh, the example of Toscana, the, the example of the Port of, of, Li, of Livorno. There are different projects that are developed and that look at how the ports will be in the future. You have here the example of logistics, the port road management, how to, to have bet, better parking space, better port railway, uh, the barge traffic management. If you think that, for example, for the barge traffic man, management, uh, in some big ports, let's say, where you, have in, uh, when, where you have inland waterway ports, that ports that have an inland waterway function, if you think about the barge traffic management, in some big ports still uh, like five, six years ago, they were allocating uh, 
um, the let's say the terminal the terminal slot when they when the, the port the port could the, the people from the port could see the barge from the lock then you know there was like a rush to arrive close to the lock like this you could have uh, your uh, let's say your terminal slot before the others of course this this was uh, creating some um, uh, confusion and uh, people had to wait at the lock and so on and the solution was to develop something that was integrated uh, obligation to have AIS that in the inland navigation is like the GPS activated all the time some modern IT barge traffic systems and so on but we saw many examples of this uh, with uh, Livorno and Valencia um, today um, the the thing that I will um, I, I, I just uh, I would like to tell you as a conclusion is the fact that we um, as ESPO we need your technical expertise we need the, the technical of expertise of the ports but also from the other port stakeholders because this new digitalization cannot work if all the, the port community is together and is this really decides to be together to develop something new and I totally agree with uh, what uh, um, Madame Perez from the Valencia Port Foundation was saying before, that he, sometimes you, you have this, um, it happens in the port world, you know better than me, it happens that there is a bit the, the thing is that if I share, uh, people is going to, to copy what I'm doing at the moment, and I will not preserve my uh, diversity and, uh, and my competitiveness of the port. It's not this the case. In ESPO, we have permanent committees where people cooperate and develop new projects together, new solutions. There is a lot of sharing. I could make you a lot of examples of all the cooperation that uh, have been developed by ports, and it always, it, it always works. I mean, almost always. And uh, it's not by preserving things and in this case digital information that we are going to uh, to be better than the others that's why i really encourage you if you if you have people from the ports and you have technical expertise to give us on it we'll be happy to talk to you and to invite you for the digital transport forum thank you